feeder through and then mount the hinges rather than um, in the gap behind the fence post and hang the gate behind the, fe the fence so that they could uh... now this mod actually has a double cedar um, so the hitch that I'm currently attached to has, an, uh, has a joiner hitch that um, allows you to stick a second one on on the side so you end up with somewhere in the region of I want to say 9.4 meters of working width and not a lot of power needed uh, where is it cedars so this is the one we're running uh, 4.5 meters and needs 85 horsepower this one also needs 85 horsepower 9 meters and um, basically what you have here is you have this frame that attaches to both of the cedar attachers and has a tow hitch so that they haul behind each other and then you attach to so maybe you unfold it and it unfold that hitch unfolds over here somewhere <coughs> and they sit side by side it also allows um, you've got solid fertilizer tanks as well and I, I opted against that why have we stopped because I didn't press the cruise control button but yes it's it's a nice little cedar and it's different from as I said the one that everybody seems to use which I don't appear to have downloaded because everybody uses it um, I've got the Amazon D9 series, the Great Plains, um, that's a direct drill. Those aren't, but those are dirt cheap, they're, they're good starter farm. Um, but as I said, I, I can't, it, it's getting to be time to upgrade because our fields are quite, quite big. This has taken us about an hour and a half to plant. So, um, obviously, a bigger planter, more in line with this harvester, would be a better deal. And we'll be looking for that over the coming year. But if we get to the point where it's time to plant and let's get to it, I may just buy a brand new cedar and sell this one. <coughs> Alrighty, so that's the last main row. And then we have to do the ends. I think in real life you would take off part of this hitch and put it on a low loader sideways in order to move it. But at four and a half meters, I think technically it's too wide to drive on the roads, at least in Europe. Which is one of the reasons this this thing is a little bit awkward. Um, I think obviously this is a lot easier. You can park, you know, you can drop that onto a low loader sideways, and not have to worry about the width when you're carting it between places. But this particular mod, you can't do anything with that hitch. To give it a sort of a travel mode. It's one of the things that was good about the Cavernland um, DLC way back when. Was it the Cavernland or the Coon? Uh, the Coon DLC way back when. When we got the, the planters that were nine meters wide didn't fold. However, that wasn't really a problem because they had a travel mode where you could hitch onto the edge of the cedar and uh, take it places okay I will probably do what you're not supposed to do and 
fill in the gaps to the left. But everything to the right will just do driving up and down. supposed to do this but we will I think there was one mod seeder I looked at that also you didn't have to turn it on um, just the fact of it's touching the ground means that it's um, it's on maybe that was the rake we used to use it's done this one done. And get that done. And pretend we haven't been driving all over the field. Okay. I think now there's basically two cedar widths here. So we're going to end up in this corner, which is not really ideal. Um, but well, live with it, I guess. Anyway, so that is all of our crops planted for the entire year. Well, you say the entire year, but it's sort of, that's all the crops planted for this next harvest. But we are going to plant stuff in fall, so it's not entirely uh, all crops done, I guess. Actually, that's kind of worked out a little bit better. There's that annoying gap to our left now that we can fix. Okay. Ground powered, yes, indeed. course now all of the planting rows are at different angles so OCD farmer is probably not happy about that but if all you're worried about is did we cover seed cover the field the entire field in seed then uh, I think that's uh, probably an achievement I did get another in-game achievement the other day as well. I can't remember what it was. And it was sort of, oh, that's nice. wonder what that means. That's the problem. With, with Farming Simulator 22, they really haven't been... There are some, um, you know, go on some forums and they'll tell you how to get the achievements. But the achievements they've done this time round are very very cryptic um, it's 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 not like um, oh cut down a tree you get an achievement um, you know, cut down a uh, ten trees get the next level achievement cultivate a hundred acres get an achievement it's this one is hey here's a cryptic achievement figure out what it means and then achieve it 
or just go on a forum and see what someone says it means and then do it. So what's the mod idea? And, well, that's the that end of the field done. Oh, pretty like. Oh, I have, th you know, I have thought there is so much that can be done with, you know, Amish farming simulator or, you know, I know some people have done steam tractors, um, but they're still toe behind equipment and for plows, uh, back in the day, you used to plant a steam tractor at that end, a steam tractor at that end, and you had a sort of a seesaw plow attached by um, ropes or chains to to them both, and they would haul the plow down the field in one direction. Um, the guys on the back of the plow would jump off and sit on the other side of the seesaw and the other steam tractor would then haul the plow back the other way. Um, and I am considering, I'm, I'm, I'm still in the design stages of building a model railway, um, UK style. But I am considering, you know, maybe having a field with two steam tractors and a seesaw plow in the middle, just because that was a thing done back in the day. And I think it would be look, it would look good, and it would be something different. Um, I build or I model in double O, which there is a a bit of a story behind, um, and I believe it was Second World War. Um, prior to the Second World War, model trains were O gauge, so I think about seven millimeters to the foot, or. Uh, 148-ish. Um, well, obviously during the Second World War we need all of the, the materials we can get and um, there's nothing left over to make model trains with. So little boy's got a little bit upset. So the model train manufacturers said, okay, what we'll do is we'll do half O, hence the HO scale it, it basically means it, you know it, it was half o literally and um one in is it one in 86th scale well the problem they then found was the clockwork motors of the time would not fit into a half size um british model locomotive So that's where Double O came in. They basically said, well, because Europe and America are mass producing track at a certain gauge, um, we'll leverage off that mass production, but we'll make our locomotives and rolling stock bigger so that you can fit a clockwork motor in it. Um, thus, double O scale was born. The locomotives are large, are a larger scale than American and European format, but they use the American European format tracks. So, when you look at double O scale model, the track is technically too narrow and doesn't look right. And there, and since then, there have been. Um, originally specialist scales they're getting more mainstream of em which is close but not quite um real double o scale 
<coughs> and P4, which is pretty much accurate. The reason for EM is the the existing ready-to-run locomotives that you can buy in double O. By buying a slightly longer axle, it'll run on EM scale without a problem most of the time. I mean, some models may not work, but all you need is a slightly longer axle and it'll work for you. Um, why is that not turning off? Because I'm pressing the wrong button. Um, P4, the model has to be much more um, accurate. And so a lot of ready to run stuff will not run on P4 or cannot cannot easily be converted to P4 because the you know the clearances on the wheels are just too narrow. So EM was deemed it's it's good enough, the track is a little bit wider, but you have to make your own track because up until very, very recently nobody actually produced uh, or mass produced EM scale track. Um, and also, you know, modern era, you can actually get um, UK models in HO scale now, where before you, you know, just didn't happen. However, um, excuse me while I try and concentrate on getting this in. And we'll unload the seed there. Um, yeah, if 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 you're if you want a lot of models, you're probably going to have to go a, go double O. If you want to do modifications so you can run EM, you can probably do that as well. P4 is an expensive. You're going to be building your own rolling stock, <coughs> and. Um, HO just isn't really supported in the UK much, so the the stock that you can buy for it is very limited. So really, if you're going to do UK models, if you're not a big scale modeler or don't have the time, you're probably going to be limiting yourself to double O. Okay, I'm going to hitch us up to the, uh, the rake. Of course, getting a bigger mowing kit means we wouldn't have to use the rake unless we're making hay. And then my chosen era is uh, Great Western Railway in the 1930s. So there's not a lot of road vehicles available for that era. There weren't that many road vehicles around. But um, locomotives and rolling stock are fairly well... <coughs> um, covered yeah variety although the manufacturers need to return to uh, some of their older vehicles uh, need another round of production the little swath around the mod hub was fit through the gates yes um, I'm just finding this one, I'm going to set this off on a worker, um, this one is a little bit easier. Um, just because it's shorter and manoeuvres around a field. Well, again, if we go to Maze Plus, we'll be able to have mowers with conditioners and um, and if I do want to, uh, Ted, you can 
they've added what is it if you don't have a conditioner on your mower which I don't think this one would you can windrow once sorry Ted once to uh, to make conditioned grass you Ted again to make semi dry you Ted a third time to make hay <clears throat> however you can mess with the uh, the settings on your tedder so that you only need to ted once um, you can also ted backwards so let's say it rains and you're role playing you could say oh it rained my semi dry grass has just become conditioned grass so you run the tedder over to turn it back into conditioned grass and say well now we're just going to have to ted it again if that's how you want to play But you can you can you can make all the settings in Maze Plus so that um, you have to do as little work as you do today, or as much work as you want. And this mower is just the right size for this, by the looks of it. Close enough. I'll go back and get that bit. So yeah, I find two options for using the rake. One is to follow it with the the baler, so that you're not getting impeded by rows you've already created and now need to cross. Which is actually the way the farmer I watch uses it. Um, farmer's wife is running the rake, but she has to stop at strategic locations and wait for her husband to come and bail the row in front of her because she needs to cross cross the streams and then uh, as I said we will be upgrading the mowing kit probably when we get a 300 or thereabouts horsepower tractor we'll look at that okay Put the mower away mm, somewhere. Pick a bay. Doesn't matter. Um, I guess we're going in the middle. Bit and actually that's. Seems to have worked out okay. So, what date are we? We're second of April, or second day of April. Put the seeds back in the silo, because that's a plan. Go grab the baler. So I'm kind of liking our main um, job at the moment is uh, well, kind of two. We've got grass and we got fertilization. Yeah, you know, grass and grass contracts and fertilization contracts, and both can be done with our farm equipment with the tractor with both of the tractors we own. Which is one of the reasons why I'm not looking at. Um, actually, we're going to drop that off. Um, I'm not looking at going square bales for a while, just because. Um, this tractor won't do square bales. And thus, thus our options suddenly become limited. But once we've got a tractor over 300 horsepower, we can run big mowers, we can run big balers, big square balers, or round wrappers, but 
I kind of like producing big bales, the biggest bales, and uh, using the extractor. So even when we go to square bales, we'll probably still do extractor and the biggest bales possible, just because there's less bales to move around. Okay, I need to take a quick break. I will be back in a sec. Okay, back. So yeah, my general philosophy is um, when I when I have two tractors, I kind of want both tractors to be able to do as many of the jobs as they can, which allows me the flexibility of. You know, both tractors can run the mower, both tractors can run the the tedder, etc, etc. So I'm not limited at any point of, oh, my tractor's out seeding a field and the other one's not sufficient to do the task at hand. Um, so the idea would then be, if we buy a 300 horsepower tractor, then I want then to be looking at my largest equipment at the 200 to 230 horsepower range because then our Deutz can run the equipment and the new big tractor can run the equipment. 